Lebanon is another country dealing with a huge refugee crisis, but Beirut, the capital, has overcome years of civil war and for many decades was described as the Paris of the Middle East. I went there to find out if today there are fears amongst the city's many different communities that the threat of war from neighboring Syria will spill over and shatter this city's hard-earned stability. Beirut is a city synonymous with violent upheaval. It's lived through a decades-long civil war. But it's also a city of contrasts between old and new, and between the patchwork of communities and faiths that live here. Shia, Sunni, Maronite Christian, Druze, all the communities of the Middle East are represented here. Which is why it's commonly said that if you want to gauge the mood of the Middle East as a whole, you have to come here to Beirut. This area is known as Dahia, and it's the southern suburbs of Beirut, which is the stronghold of Hezbollah. It's only a 15 to 20 minute drive from the center of Beirut, but it feels very much like you're entering a different country. Hezbollah was born during the Israeli occupation of southern Lebanon to drive the foreign troops out. It's why it's so popular in this district, which is religiously conservative, traditional, and relatively poor. And we needed the group's permission to film here because they're currently fighting militants from so-called Islamic State and there have been a number of car bombs recently. Mohammed Klait is an activist sympathetic to Hezbollah. There's an old Lebanese saying that says, if Syria sneezes, Lebanon catches the cold. And it's actually true. Every security situation, every economic situation that happens in Syria, it affects Lebanon. I traveled to a nearby neighborhood where last year yet another suicide bomber took the life of a young security officer. The area was packed at the time with scores of people gathered to watch a World Cup football match in a local cafe. I met Mohammed Haj Hassan at the same place. He, like many people in this part of the city, has close family and friends fighting so-called Islamic State in the Syrian mountains. Of course, we are in the war, and if you think strategy, this is one of the most uh, great threat we have ever been facing. Now it's an exhausting war. It's, uh, no one will expect an end soon. It will take years. You lost uh, close relatives fighting ISIS. Uh, how do you, how does your family feel about that? I feel proud to have one of my relatives uh, that uh, paid his blood to defend me and my people. If you ask anyone here, he will say that he will have a relative that whether has martyred and he's fight or he's fighting right now. This city's vast contrasts are everywhere. Just a few minutes drive from Hezbollah's stronghold and we emerge onto this a brash, modern, and very western seafront strip. It's known as Beirut's Corniche, where locals and tourists alike stroll along the promenade. Life here for some couldn't be more different. Beach clubs like this one bring people together to party and to relax. Hiba Khalil blogs about Beirut fashion, art, and food but she also volunteers in a local refugee camp. She inhabits two different worlds, and as the party goes on behind, she tells me about life for young people in this part of Beirut. I describe my city as definitely crazy and vibrant, but at the same time, it is really cultured. We speak languages, we read, we have like rich history, we read books, we have hundreds of museums in one city, in one small city, you know? So I think that's really um, rich and it's worthy to look at. Is there sort of concern that what's happening in the wider region will cause instability I mean, in, in, in people's lives here in Beirut? I believe this, this pessimism exists on the um, like, um, older uh, age groups, honestly. The younger ones are either ignorant of the situation or they want to ignore the situation or they, they're not, like, they're really determined not to fall into that hole. As the sun goes down, and with ISIS militants fighting barely an hour away, 
you don't expect to find young liberal Beiruties to still be out in nightclubs like this one. It's a reminder that this city constantly surprises. And just to prove that, the man spinning the decks who owns this bar is called Jihad. Maybe that's the essence of this city, that despite each and every crisis, it finds a way not just to surprise, but to emerge from the chaos. I came back the next day to be shown around by Jihad, whose bar is in the Hamra district. Me too, how's everything? Good? Good. The heart of downtown Beirut. Yeah. I'll give you the helmet. Okay. Brilliant. Okay, fantastic. And let's try it. <laughs> let's make the tour. <laughs> and the tour was to take place in this very unusual mode of transport. Jihad told me what he found so special about this district. Yeah. Why I prefer Hamra? Because it's cosmopolitan and, uh, and it has a character also, Hamra. It has history. And it feels completely different to here and here feels completely it's different totally to the mountains. Different. The mentality also exactly, of the that's people. What I mean. exactly, every, yeah. yeah, exactly. It's yeah. like everyone, each area has different exactly, way of thinking exactly. and like that. But it's nice like that. Of it's course, it's nice. nice. Have a... Like that, you, you feel like it, you change exactly. when you move to another exactly. area. Exactly. It's not all the same. Exactly. You know, for most people who, you know, don't know Beirut, if you show them these kinds of, you know, they shops won't believe. or Porsche or Brioni <laughs> or Starbucks, they they'll won't... say, no, no, you filmed it in... Exactly, uh, exactly. In, they uh, won't believe that. You filmed it in Monaco or something. <laughs> <laughs> and as if to prove the point, The young people I've met here in Beirut all share a determination to live their lives, however different their values and aspirations. One man who has lived through all the ups and the many downs of Beirut is Zafar Shwai, a respected businessman from one of Beirut's most renowned commercial dynasties. He owns the famous Kassara vineyard in the Bekaa Valley, shown in this promotional video. I was unable to go there because it borders a region where there is fighting between Hezbollah and ISIS. His family bought the vineyard just before the Lebanese civil war started and experienced every war since then. And yet, it has survived and indeed prospered. I asked him if he was optimistic or pessimistic about the future. So you're, you're optimistic about Beirut? I am realistic and I hope that Lebanon will be protected. I pray that Lebanon is protected from these crazy uh, behaviors, criminal behaviors, which are very close to us after all, very, very close to us. With the crisis in neighboring Syria, Beirut is facing one of its biggest tests. Every time it's faced conflict and war, people have questioned whether its diversity and delicate cultural balance could survive. But it has always managed to. It's what makes this such a unique city in a turbulent region. The UK government recently pledged a further £100 million to help Syrian refugees in the region, with £20 million set aside to support Lebanese schools. That's all for tonight. We'll be back on air with more reports from around the world next month when I hope you'll join me. Until then, from all of us on the programme, good night.